Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heaven and heaven, Almighty God our Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God our Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers because in our weakness, we can do nothing good without you. Give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you, both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 1 and half verse as printed in the bulletin. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat on the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on the law of the day and day. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything that they need to show them is out. It is not so with the wicked. They are like the trees which in the wind will go away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. 
than those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus came down with the twelve apostles and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thank you, sir. Where this gospel lesson occurs in Jesus' ministry is very near the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and he's already called his disciple, and he has reached the point where he's trying to pull everything together and move on from there. So it's instructive and significant that he begins with what's known as the Beatitudes. Um, there's also the attitudes in Matthew, but the ones that we read today are from Luke. And Jesus had attracted a great flock of people that were following him. And he began on this lesson to lay out the heart of his message. What he says is, God so loves this poor and broken and shattered world with its people so hopelessly enslaved by their own greed and hatred and rebellion. But blessed are you who are poor. Jesus says in this context that the poor are all those who are without hope. And to be blessed is to be given hope and to possess, to possess a view of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. The poor all know that they are at their wit's end in that time, and in that era. They have nothing to lean on, and they are hopeless. And then Jesus sadly notes that those determined to ignore his word and stubbornly hold on to a life filled with riches and power will suffer the consequences of that. And for them, there really is no blessedness. They are just the opposite of those who are blessed. And Jesus preaches a message which is intended and does in fact turn the world upside down. In our Discovery Hour series, our adult ed classes on Wednesday evenings, The Chosen is one of the series we watch, and it begins with Jesus, Jesus saying, get used to different. Things are going to change. So beatitude in the Greek means blessed and truly fulfilled, truly happy and deeply fulfilled. So how would your life change today? If you really believe Jesus when he says, blessed are you who are poor, 
for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Perhaps a more challenging question is this one. How would your world be turned upside down right now if you dared to listen to Jesus when he said, Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are ill now. The Beatitudes overturned a thousand years worth of teaching of the Hebrew people and all of those who were the Pharisees and Sadducees and went around proclaiming what they thought to be the word of God. But Jesus said, no, is there something different here? Jewish piety at that time would have had everyone believe that wealth and health and power were all signs that God loved them. So what are you going to do if you think God's on you? You're going to lord it over everybody else, right? The more you suffer, though, the more they knew you were cursed and not loved by God. So when Jesus comes and proclaims this message, people must have been scratching their heads, asking, what's going on? Did I hear him right? Did he really say that the poor were blessed? Yes, they did hear him right. And his words could have the same effect for us today. Yet for the most part, many of us still worship at the altars of power and money and control and instant gratification. I'm not just talking to you guys. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to everyone sitting in these pews. Not to condemn you but to open your eyes to something different. To open your eyes to something that Jesus asked us to open our eyes to because along comes Jesus and he's very happy and content to turn our world upside down. And these Beatitudes call all of us as Christians to think and to think hard about what is really worth doing in our lives. Woe to you if you have worked tirelessly to avoid the pain and the need and the injustice which afflicts your neighbor, which oftentimes we can't even see or behold. But blessed, blessed are you who embrace the poverty of Christ, the poverty which allowed him to pour out everything for all those he loved and who follow him. Now, we can avoid all of these things very easily. We can avoid all of these things by simply keeping quiet and getting along. But blessed are you who, who will not compromise when it comes to this gospel lesson. Blessed are you when you weep, when you weep over the suffering of your neighbor, when you weep over the violence between nations, when you weep over the injustice done to others, often even in Jesus' name. And in the end, isn't that the whole point? You and I as baptized believers are called to live a Christ-like life. We are called and empowered by the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent to us after he rose. We are called to become more and more like Christ. Yesterday in our church, we had a celebration for a fellow named Absalom Jones. And I've shown you guys this book before. And it's a book called Holy Women and Holy Men. And it's all of the saints who are worshipped and bowed down to not just in our church, but in Catholic and Protestant churches all around the world. Absalom Jones is one of those. Today is what's called his feast day, in which we celebrate this life. Absalom Jones was born in slavery in Delaware in um, 1746. At 20 years old, he married another slave, and eventually, because he was in Delaware, which was kind of on a line between North and South, he was allowed to work, so he actually could make some money. And the money he made 
he used to purchase the freedom of his wife. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I might have bought my own freedom first and said, I'll come back and get you some <laughs> um, But that's not what he did. He bought, and the reason was when you have a wife and you and your wife had children, those children would be free. That was the law at the time. So he bought his children's freedom by buying his wife's freedom and then later acquired his own. But he worshiped in a church that eventually told him he could not sit in the pews downstairs. He began to bring people from his community because they were all African American. There got to be too many of them. And they were a threat. So they said, go sit up in the balcony. And eventually he said, no, I don't think so. I'll start my own church. And finally, after many, many, many years of growing in the church, he was eventually ordained the first black Episcopal priest in that diocese. And his church over the first year grew by 500 members. Now, we couldn't fit that many in here. So let's hope we get them and we can build a bigger building. Um, but imagine that. Imagine that in those days, growing that church by 500 people. Um, and so, really, when you think about it, the Episcopal Church had very little to win. Very little to win by ordaining the first black priest, but quite a bit to lose by doing that. Which makes me think of the song, Incense and Peppermints. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. you, you guys remember that. In 1967, the can't remember the name of your incense and peppermints, little to win and nothing to lose. Go Google it, you'll see it. Um, the church had a little to win by doing that. So what does that tell you? Blessed are those who seek to do something different. Blessed are those who seek to turn the world upside down. Blessed are those who seek to comfort those who are afflicted. Blessed are those who are poor and who are meek and who are looked down upon by society. We often think we have little to win by embracing them. I was planning on going yesterday to the church of St. Philip's down in Harlem, where Bishop Curry, our bishop of the entire National, National Episcopal Church, and Bishop Vici uh, were preaching and celebrating. But I wasn't able to make it because I missed the train going in, so I came back home, turned it on Zoom, and recorded the sermon by Bishop Curry. So I'm going to have Janet send it out to all of you this week. It is a powerful, powerful sermon. Bishop Curry is like a Southern Baptist black preacher. He wanders all around and, you know, does all this. And he is just fabulous. And so I want you guys to hear his sermon um, because they were celebrating Absalom Jones yesterday. Well, today, Bishop Curry is preaching again at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in the city. And today they're having a memorial service for Desmond Tutu, another African-American person who stepped out of what society expected of him. Not that he just stepped out of what society expected of him, he went contrary to what everyone in society wanted from him. They wanted him to continue in subjugation and marginalization. And he brought his people out of apartheid to be a new people in South Africa. That's what Christ calls us to do. Now, this is not a statement that any of you are racist. 
I do not believe that. This is a statement that we need to be in solidarity with those who are marginalized, those in our midst who are powerless, those in our midst who feel ostracized, those in our midst who have walls put around them that they can't remove by their own power. And if we can't be that power, who can? So that is, that is our call. And this gospel lesson today, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, who are pure in heart. Nor is this a condemnation of those of you who have made money. All right, so don't hear it that way. I made a buttload of money when I was young, okay? So if I'm gonna condemn you, I gotta condemn myself too. I'm sure I'm gonna do that today. But what it is, it's a message. God gave you the gifts and talents so that you could share them, all right? So you can share them and show God's grace to others around you and give that grace to those around you who need it, who are in all sorts of distress. Imagine the number of people right now who are suffering because of the death of a parent or a loved one from COVID or the loss of a job from the, all of this transition of jobs going on for the last couple of years. And uh, imagine, just imagine for yourself what you could do for one such person, just if only for a day. Imagine what you could do. And imagine the grace they would feel from whatever it is that you did. Absalom Jones is often called Blessed Absalom Jones. If you read, if you Google him, read up on him. That's what they call him, Blessed Absalom Jones. Well, there's a reason for that. He understood this gospel lesson. He understood what it meant to stand for his people and to stand for those who were afflicted and to bring them hope. That's what this lesson is about. It's about hope. It's about renewal of people who are in places, even perhaps without their own fault, they're just there because of conditions and they need us to help them take off those bindings stretch their own muscles, flex their own wings, and fly in places they want to fly. Well, that's what we're called to do. So as we, as we go through what I hope will be a return to some normalcy over the next, God knows when, a couple, couple of months, then well, woe to us who miss this message of today. But blessed are us who can hear it and believe it and act on it. And the church really is God's instrument, God's primary instrument for doing that and taking this message to all of those who need to hear it. I'm really gratified and feel blessed by the fact that all of you are here today. I thought I might be preaching to an empty church. Um, and I'm not, so that feels good. And we improvised and we made our own music. So, so what if I just thought about this? Let's make our own music, guys. We can, we, we can make our own music. We, we are one of the few churches in this area who are even worshiping today. So that's an empowering thing for all of us. So I, I just hope and pray that that power can be translated into something concrete in the lives of those around us because the church really is God's primary blessed instrument for that message.
believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten, God, 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 through the Father and the Son and the worship and the Lord of God. He has said so through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We have not only the Catholic Church to the Christians. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. in your leaflet. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. The truth. For Andrew, our presiding bishop and Alan and Mary, our bishops, and all bishops, and our own dear Father Mike, and all ministers. For all our church, our church, church. church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. I ask your prayers for the family of Lily Gristo, for Molly and Lily Hoppy, for the family of Ginger Horvath, and the family of Pat Larson, for Anthony DeLuca, for Joyce Peters, Jen McCann, Gregory, Rosemary, for the family of George Huguenot, for Mary Churchill, for Peter Howard, and for Max Schulman, our food pantry worker. We invite your own personal intercessions. I pray for Laura and Jim. Doug. Tiffany. Bill. Tiara. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We thank you for the blessing of this parish, O oh Lord, all who are in attendance here today. For the spirit that is prevalent here for all who work for justice and peace and reconciliation of your kingdom. We will exalt you, O oh God, our King. And we praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No one in our name will know things you've done and have done. And so, hold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life and power. To the honor and glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on me. Forgive you all. 
all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Amen. And also with the other. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
when we fall into the sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms on the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he gave him thanks to you, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Hey, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is overcome again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts, sanctified them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of food, and of any life in him, sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And the last day, bring us all your saints and the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as I say to Christ, as taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us all the day of the